What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another first time watching movie reaction. This one's a big one as it does celebrate its 60th anniversary, the end of this year. I'm talking about Gregory Peck in To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, I'm very excited as I've actually only seen one other film, The Omen, with Gregory Peck. And I know I got to go back deep into his catalog. And I think this one's going to be a big one once again as it does celebrate its 60th anniversary. I did read a little bit of the synopsis and it does seem like a more serious courtroom drama type of film either way I'm excited. I'm ready for you guys. And I've talked about it here on the channel before. I want to do more classic and black and white films for the channel. So enough talking. Let's get to watching. But before we do, if you guys want to show love to the channel, make sure to hit that big thumbs up and consider subscribing today as I do movie news, live streams, and more reactions like this here on the channel. All right, guys. So without further ado, 1962's To Kill a Mockingbird. Actually, a pretty creative intro for a movie from 1962. And plus, I remember I used to do that with the stencils and like, you know, crayons and whatnot. Maycomb was a tired old town, even in 1932 when I first knew it. There was no hurry, for there was nowhere to go, nothing to buy, no money to buy it with. Although Maycomb County had recently been told that it had nothing to fear but fear itself. I brought you these here hickory nuts as part of my entailment. Well, I uh, thank you. The collards we had last week were delicious. Well, I thought you'd want to thank him. Oh, I do. I think it embarrasses him to be thanked. Why does he bring you all this stuff? He's paying me for some legal work I did for him. That's the only way he can. He has no money. Is he poor? Yes. Are we poor? We are indeed. Cunningham's are country folks, farmers. Crash hit them the hardest. Hey, yourself. I'm Charles Baker Harris. How old are you? Four and a half. Going on seven. Well, no wonder then. Folks call me deal. I'm from Meridian, Mississippi. And I'm spending two weeks next door with my Aunt Stephanie. My mama worked for a photographer in Meridian. She answered my picture in the beautiful child contest and won five dollars on it. Beautiful child contest. There goes the meanest man that ever took a breath of life. He has a boy named Boo that he keeps chained to a bed in the house over yonder. Wonder what he does in there. Wonder what he looks like. Judging from his tracks, he's about six and a half feet tall. He eats raw squirrels and all the cats he can catch. His teeth are yellow and rotten, his eyes are popped, and he drools most of the time. What a wild imagination. Dio, what are you doing here? My oh, Lord, Aunt Stephanie, you almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Dill, I don't want you playing around that house over there. There's a maniac lives there, and he's dangerous. I was standing in my yard one day when his mama come out yelling, he's killing us all. And when his daddy come by, he reached over with his scissors, stabbed him in his leg, pulled him out, and went right on cutting the paper. They wanted to send him to an asylum, but his daddy said, no Radley's going to any asylum. So they locked him up in the basement of the courthouse till he nearly died of the damp and his daddy brought him back home. There he is to this day, sitting over there with his scissors. Lord knows what he's doing or thinking. So maybe it's not an old wives' tale. I mean, the adults are telling it like it's true fact. Hey, Mr. Bones, don't you say hey to me, you ugly girl. You say good afternoon, Mr. Bones. Good afternoon, Mr. Bones. You look like a picture this afternoon. You don't say a picture of what? My goodness gracious, look at your flowers. The gardens at Bellingrad have nothing to compare with your flowers. Oh, I don't think they're as nice as last year. Well, grand seeing you, Mr. Bowes. See? A little bit of kind words go a long way. That kind of made her day right there. She was like, oh, okay. He's got some rotten kids, but he's a nice man. <laughs> to Atticus, my beloved husband. Atticus, Jim says his watch is going to belong to him someday. That's right. What are you going to give me? 
There's a pearl necklace. There's a ring that belonged to your mother. And I put them away, and they're to be yours. Jim? Yeah? How was that when Mama died? Pretty. Was Mama pretty? Mm-hmm. Did you love her? Yeah. Did I love her? A single parent life, man, that's tough. Atticus, you heard about Tom Robinson. Grand jury will get around to charging him tomorrow. I uh, was thinking about appointing you to take his case. Now, I realize you're very busy these days with your practice, and your children need a great deal of your time. I'll take the case. No hesitation, man. He must need the work. All right, get in. Hurry up! All right. You ready? No, I've seen kids in cinema, you know, do this, but it looks so crazy still it still looks insane <laughs> i would never do that it looks so dangerous oh they're going right to that house of boo radley or boo boo diddly bo diddly Ooh! he was already like i'm right here i'm just gonna go on the porch and <laughs> ding dong ditch you tell him about this back in Meridian County, Mr. Deal has. <laughs> oh, these kids are going to make a day of it. If you're looking for your daddy, he's inside the courthouse. Deal, wait a minute. I see your daddy and the colored man. The colored man looks to me like he's crying. There's a whole lot of men sitting together on one side. And one man keeps pointing at the colored man and yelling. What in the world are you doing here? Hello, Atticus. Mr. Ewell. I'm real sorry they picked you to defend that nigger that raped my mayella. I don't know why I didn't kill him myself instead of going to the sheriff. They thought that you believed Tom Robinson's story again, Iron. I said you wrong, man. You dead wrong. Mr. Finch ain't taking this story against Iron. Well, they was wrong, wasn't they? I've been appointed to defend Tom Robinson. Now that he's been charged, that's what I intend to do. What kind of man are you? You got children of your own. Hmm. Very racist time back then, especially in that area, I'm sure. But when you're a lawyer, you're appointed to defend your client. Doesn't matter what color they are, race, religion, creed, doesn't matter. What are you going to do? Going to look in a wound at the Radley house and see if we can get a look at Boo Radley. Boo Radley. <laughs> God, these kids are taking mischief to a whole other level. <laughs> Spin <on> me. <coughs> Grease the wheels. <laughs> I don't think it would work like that. Jim. <laughs> Spit some more. See what I say. <laughs> that homeowner might not be too friendly, man. I'll tell you that. I mean, like the boy said earlier, you know, some of them are packing guns and they'll shoot you if you're on their property. And they're probably legally well within their rights too. Kid or not. How do they know you're not someone trying to rob them? <gasps> oh shit. Yo, warn him. <laughs> oh, she's petrified. <laughs> oh, these kids froze up. What was that? A ghost or something? Oh, is that an actual person there? Because you only saw the shadow. You didn't see any... Oh, no. Oh, no, boy. It's getting caught in that chicken wire. <laughs> He's running through the street in his drawers. I can't go in without my pants. Now you stay right here. I'll be back before you can count to ten. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 
11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, no! What did I tell you? Oh! Who got shot? Or they just shot at him? Mr. Radley shot at a, a prowl out in his college. A prowl? Oh, Marty! Came to see Jean Louise ready for first day at school. Did you hear me, Scout? Now hurry! <laughs> she a tomboy. She doesn't like that. Hey, bud, look at Scout! <laughs> Still don't see why I have to wear a darn old dress. Dress. <laughs> oh, Jim. Jim. Jeez, I'll tell you one thing. If I ever slammed the screen door like that when I was younger, woo -hoo -hoo, that's a paddling. Well, I'm ready. Come on, let's go. Look at this boy did it again. And he did it again. Papa. And again. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is why we can't have nice things. The hell? I was trying to explain to that darn lady teacher why he didn't have no money for his lunch. And she got sorry to me. Your daddy, Mr. Walter Cunningham from Old Sarum. Well, come home and have dinner with us, Walter. Well, our daddy's a friend of your daddy's. I must have missed it. She was explaining to him why he didn't have any money? I don't know when I've had a rose. We've been having squirrels and rabbits lately. Damn. How old were you when you got your first gun, Atticus? Thirteen or fourteen. And that I could shoot all the blue jays I wanted. But to remember, it was a sin to kill a mockingbird. Why? Well, I reckon because mockingbirds don't do anything but make music for us to enjoy. But Atticus, he's gone and drained his dinner in syrup, and now he's pouring it all over. Scout? What? Come out here, I want to talk to you. Oh, that embarrassed him. That boy is your company. And if he wants to eat up that tablecloth, you let him, you hear? And if you can't act fit to eat like folks, you can just sit here and eat the kitchen. <laughs> Give her a little, little spanking. Teacher got mad as a devil at me and said you were teaching me to read all wrong. Then acted like a fool and tried to give Walter Cunningham a quarter. When everybody knows Cunningham's won't take nothing from nobody. Oh, well that's what happened. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Till you climb inside of his skin and walk around in it. But if I keep going to school, we can't ever read anymore. You know what a compromise is? Been in the law? It's an agreement reached by mutual consent. You can see the necessity of going to school. We'll keep right on reading the same every night. Is that a bargain? There just didn't seem to be anyone or anything Atticus couldn't explain. See, there he is! I swear to God, there's a mad dog down the street apiece. He's coming this way. He's got it all right, Mr. Finch. Rabies? Take him, Mr. Finch. Oh, no, Mr. Tate. He can't shoot. Don't waste time, Hank. I can't shoot that well, and you know it. Well, I haven't shot a gun in years. Well, I'd feel mighty comfortable if you did now. Just another day in Alabama. <laughs> I can't wait to tell you about my visit to the top. Yes. The hell is that? Oh, dang. Well, you better scream or something. Oh, is that the guy from the courtroom? You nigger lover. 
You mind staying here with Scout till I get Cal home? No, sir. Night, Jim. Night, Cal. Where is that? Atticus had promised me he would wear me out if he ever heard of me fighting anymore. I soon forgot. Cecil Jacobs made me forget. Atticus, do you defend niggers? Don't say niggers, Scout. I didn't say it. Cecil Jacobs did. That's why I had to fight him. I had to, Atticus. He... I don't care what the reasons are. I forbid you to fight. I'm simply defending a Negro. Tom Robinson, there are some things that you're not old enough to understand just yet. There's been some high talk to the effect that I shouldn't do much about defending this man. If you shouldn't be defending him, then why are you doing it? For a number of reasons. The main one is that if I didn't, I couldn't hold my head up in town. I couldn't even tell you or Jim not to do something again. Fuck Jim. By filling it in. I found all of these in the knot hole of that old tree at different times. This is a spelling medal. You know, they used to award these in school to spelling winners before we were born. This. I used to have one of those when I was a kid. You know, the first time when I was getting out of my breeches, well, they was all in a tangle. When I'm like back, though, they were folded across the fence, sort of like they was expecting me. It was to be a long time before Jem and I talked about Boo again. School finally ended, and summer came, and so did Dill. Ma, you're up mighty bright and early. Oh, I've been up since four. Four? Oh. Oh, yes, I always get up at four. It's in my blood. The news has gotten around the county about my bringing Tom Robinson back to the jail. Heard there might be trouble from that bunch out at Old Sarum. More mischief. Oh, no, I know who's showing up. Damn, they're rolling up deep, too. Get aside from that door, Mr. Finch. I'll send him home. Don't you touch him! Let him go! Let him go! Now you get him out of here, Mr. Finch. Jim, I want you to please leave. No, sir. Jim? Hey, Mr. Cunningham. How's your entanglement getting along? Don't you remember me, Mr. Cunningham? I'm Jean Louise Finch. You brought us some hickory nuts one early morning. Remember? We had a talk. I go to school with your boy. I go to school with Walter. He's a nice boy. Tell him hey for me, won't you? Atticus, I was just saying to Mr. Cunningham that entanglements were bad, but not to worry. It takes a long time sometimes. What's the matter? I'm not fully understanding what she's saying. Entailments take a long time. I don't, I don't have the subtitles on. I should have put them on, but. I'll tell Walter you said hey. Let's go, boys. Wow. All it took was a little bit of chatter from young Jim, from a child. They were all on edge, man. They were ready to shoot through that door if they had to. They're gone. They're gone. They won't bother you anymore. Where are you going? I can't stand it any longer. I'm going downtown to the courthouse and walk. You better not. Reverend. Reverend Socks, are you going upstairs? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, man, they're segregated. See, look at guys. You know what? This may be obvious to most of you guys. I'm younger. I'm not used to seeing stuff like this as far as, like, you know, I know about it. But when you see it, when you truly see it, you know, you forgot that there was a time like this. On the night of August 21st, 
I was just leaving my office to go home when Bob, very excited he was, and he said to get to his house as quick as I could, that his girl had been raped. She was pretty well beat up. I asked her if Tom Robinson beat her like that. She said yes, he had. Did anybody call a doctor, sir? No, sir. Why not? Well, I didn't think it was necessary. She was pretty well beat up. Something sure happened, it was obvious. In what way? Well, she was beating around the head. There were bruises already coming on her arms. She had a black eye starting. Which eye? It was her left. Well, now, was that, uh, that was her left facing you? Or looking the way that you were? Oh, yes, that, uh, that would make it her right eye. It was her right eye, Mr. Finch, now I remember. She showed me her neck. There were definite finger marks on her gullet. Well, <clears throat> all around her neck, at the back of her throat? I'd say they were all around. I was coming in from the wood with a load of kindling, and I heard Miguel screaming as I got to the fence. I run up to the window, and I seen him with my Mayella. Let's see now, you say that you ran to the house, you ran to the window, you ran inside, you ran to Mayella, and you ran to Sheriff Tate. Run for a doctor. There wasn't no need to, I seen you done it. Can you, uh, can you read and write? Yes, sir, Mr. Finch, I can read and I can write. Yes. Write your name, please, right there. You're left-handed, Mr. Ewell. What's that got to do with it, Judge? That Atticus Finch, he's trying to take advantage of me. You got to watch tricky lawyers like Atticus Finch. Quiet. Bail up, I'll let you. I must have missed what happened there, too, with the writing. He said you're left-handed? I'm definitely going to have to rewatch this movie. So I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, except God. I was sitting on the porch, and he come along. Well, there's this old chef robe in the, in the yard. I said, you come in here, boy, and bust up this chef robe, and I'll give you a nickel. And I go in the house to get him the nickel, and I turn around, and, and before I know it, he's on me. I miss me, hello. Is your father good to you? That's tolerable. Except when he's drinking. My pa's never touched a hair on my head in my life. You lying? Didn't you ever ask him to come inside the fence before? I might have. Mm, you are lying. Can you remember any other occasion? No. You say he caught me, he choked me, and he took advantage of me. Is that right? Do you remember him beating you about the face? I don't recollect if he hit me. Then who did? I mean, yes, he hit me. He hit me. Now, will you identify the man who beat you? Most certainly will. Sitting right yonder. Tom, will you stand up, please? Tom, will you catch this, please? Right-handed. Will you please catch it with your left hand? I can't, sir. Why can't you? I can't use my left hand at all. I got it caught in a cotton gin when I was 12 years old. All my muscles were tore loose. Oh! Is this the man who raped you? Oh, certainly is. He done it. He just done it. You have testified that he choked you and he beat you. You want to tell us what really happened? I got something to say. And then I ain't gonna say no more. He took advantage of me. And if you find fancy gentlemen ain't gonna do nothing about it, then you're just a bunch of lousy, yellow, stinking cowards. The, the whole bunch of you. And your fancy ass don't come to nothing. Your mammon and your Miss May Ellen, it don't come to nothing, Mr. Finch. <laughs> I thought she was going to say who really 
raped and beat her up because her story was not adding up. Were you acquainted with Mayella Violet Ewell? I had to pass her place going to and from the field every day. I'd tip my hat when I'd go by. And one day she asked me to come inside the fence and bust up a shiffer rope for her. And then she said, I reckon I'll have to give you a nickel, won't I? And I said, no, ma'am, there ain't no charge. The fence that was way last spring, way over a year ago. And did you ever go on the place again? Yes, sir. I went lots of times. Every time I passed by yonder, she'd have some little something for me to do. What happened to you on the evening of August 21st of last year? When I passed the Ewell place, and she said for me to come there and help her a minute. And then she said to come in the house. She, she has a door needs fixing. So I follows her inside, and I looked at the door, and it looked all right. And she shut the door. Well, I said, I, I best be going. I, I couldn't do nothing for her. And she said, oh, yes, I could. And she said to just step on the chair yonder and, and get that box down from on top of the shiffer rope. When the next thing I know, she grabbed me around the legs. Oh, my gosh. You've sworn to tell the whole truth. Will you do it? What happened after that? And I turned around. She sort of jumped on me. She hugged me around the waist. She reached up and kissed me on the face. She said she'd never kissed a grown man before. And she might as well kiss me. She says for me to kiss her back. And I said, Miss Mayella, let me out of here. Mr. Ewell cussed at her from the window, said he's gonna kill her. I was running so fast. Did you rape Mayella Ewell? Did not, sir. Did you harm her in any way? I did not, sir. Pretty sure I know who did, though. You're pretty good at busting up shipper robes and kindling with one hand, aren't you? Strong enough to choke the breath out of a woman and sling her to the floor? I never done that, sir. But you're strong enough to. I reckon so, sir. With that logic, anyone is. How come you're so all fired anxious to do that woman's chores? Looks like she, she didn't have nobody to help her. You did all this chopping and work out of sheer goodness, boy? Did all that for not one penny. I felt right sorry for her. You felt sorry for her? A white woman? You felt sorry for her? This case should never have come to trial. The state has not produced one iota of medical evidence. The crime Tom Robertson is charged with ever took place upon the testimony of two witnesses whose evidence has not only been called into serious question on cross-examination, but has been flatly contradicted by the defendant. I have nothing but pity in my heart. She is the victim of cruel poverty and ignorance. My pity does not extend so far as to her putting a man's life at stake, which she has done in an effort to get rid of her own guilt. Now I say guilt, because it was guilt that motivated her. She has merely broken a rigid and time-honored code of our society. What was the evidence of her offense? Tom Robinson, a human being. She must put Tom Robinson away from her. Now what did she do? She tempted a Negro. She was white, and she tempted a Negro. She did something that in our society is unspeakable. She kissed a black man, not an old uncle, but a strong, young Negro man. No code mattered to her before she broke it, but it came crashing down on her afterwards that you gentlemen would go along with them on the assumption that all Negroes lie all Negroes are basically immoral beings. All Negro men are not to be trusted around our women. 
an assumption that one associates with minds of their caliber. And which is in itself, gentlemen, a lie. A quiet, humble, respectable Negro who has had the unmitigated temerity to feel sorry for a white woman has had to put his word against two white people. The defendant is not guilty. But somebody in this courtroom is. Now, I am confident that you gentlemen will review without passion the evidence that you have heard, come to a decision, and restore this man to his family. Wow. In the name of God, believe. Woo! Gregory Peck, man. You are on another caliber. You were on another caliber of acting, my friend. Wow. That was a good speech right there. Here come 12 angry men. What is your verdict? We find the defendant guilty as charged. Wow. Even with all that shit that didn't add up. Even the young boy knows it's wrong. Miss Jean Louise? Miss Jean Louise, stand up. Wow. They showed respect to him because he was... He was representing their whole race at that time. In that moment. When everybody wanted to write him off right away. No evidence, no trial, no anything. Even after the fact of no evidence and things not adding up. Oedicus, can I see you for a minute? These kids know it ain't... They know it's not right. What happened? I think he got good news. In fact, I think he got worse news. Tom Robinson's dead. What? They were taking him to Abbottsville for safekeeping. Tom broke loose and ran. The deputy called out to him to stop. And Tom didn't stop. He shot at him to wound him and missed his aim. The deputy says Tom just ran like a crazy man. Wow. Last thing I told him was not to lose a heart that we'd ask for an appeal. We had such a good chance. Hello, Mr. Finch. I'm Spence, Tom's father. We've been talking about the appeal, Mr. Finch. How long do you think it'll take? Spence, there isn't going to be any appeal. Tom is dead. Dead. <laughs> this guy has his nerve. Why? Go inside and tell Atticus Finch as I'd come out here. Gosh. There's always a villain in the movie, and this guy is it. <laughs> He's not worth it. There was to be a pageant representing our county's agricultural products. No. 
Oh my god, did he like stab him or something? Oh my god, it's it's uh uh Bo Bo Diddley or Bo <laughs> I'm sorry I'm butchering the name. Bo Radley. I'm pretty sure that's Bo Radley, man. Or is that the father? They took him back to his house. Oh, they took the son back to the house. What happened? You alright? Yes, sir. Who brought him into the house if it wasn't the father? He was wearing something else, whoever brought him in. Someone's been after my children. I'm confused. Bob Ewell's lying on the ground under that tree down yonder with a kitchen knife stuck up under his ribs. That drunk bastard. It was Bo Radley. Then I saw someone carrying Jim. Well, who was it? Well, there he is, Mr. Tate. He can tell you his name. What the f Robert Duvall? <laughs> hey, Boo. Boo Radley. Mr. Arthur Radley. It's a clear-cut case of self-defense. Well, I'll run down to the office. Mr. Finch, do you think Jim killed Bob Yule? Is that what you think? Your boy never stabbed him. Did... Didn't he just say Arthur did? What? There's a black man dead for no reason. Now the man responsible for it is dead. Let the dead bury the dead this time, Mr. Finch. I may not be much, Mr. Finch, but I'm still sheriff of Macomb County, and Bob Ewell fell on his knife. Wow. To protect his son and Arthur as well. Even that sheriff knew that Tom was not guilty. That's sweet vengeance, man. That's sweet karma coming back. Mr. Tate was right. It would be sort of like shooting a mockingbird, wouldn't it? Thank you, Arthur. Thank you for my children. Neighbors bring food with death, and flowers with sickness, and little things in between. He gave us two soap dolls, a broken watch and chain, a knife, and our lives. One time, Atticus said, you never really knew a man until you stood in his shoes and walked around in them. Just." Standing on the Radley porch was enough. I was to think of these days many times. Of Jim and Dill and Boo Radley and Tom Robinson. And Atticus. Wow. There you guys have it, 1962's To Kill a Mockingbird. All right, Flix Talkers, so wow is an understatement. I'm so glad I finally got to see that movie, heard a lot of things about it, heard a lot of things about the novel that it was based on. Man, and I'm so glad I got to see some more of Gregory Peck. Before I get into my thoughts, guys, please leave your favorite Gregory Peck films down in the comments below. Now. Jumping to my pros, man, the Gregory Peck character, even the surrounding cast, some of the characters, but Gregory Peck in general as the lawyer, the father, Atticus, he did an exceptional job, a very believable job too, of someone that was raising his children alone. He had talked about his wife had passed, but he was a very solid lawyer and an equal lawyer, an equal opportunist lawyer. He believed every man was created equal. Every man should have a fair 
trial and i absolutely love that so when it came down to you know the 12 angry men i had spoken upon just because i had seen that movie i made a little dumb joke it was actually quite fitting because man they had anger in their heart they had hate in their heart and they judged that man just on the color of his skin and it's terrible to see because you really think sometimes even in these older movies that you're always going to get this happy magical ending or the court system and the justice system the judicial system is going to be fair and right and sunshines and rainbows right and it wasn't for tom and they played up this whole scenario that he ran and they shot him and it was his fault and it was terrible it was terrible how that played out it was terrible that he was being accused and once again just terrible the times there were of segregation and people being thought of of less than right it was a terrible time now even some of the subplots with boo radley and the mischief that the kids got into i thought it all kind of tied cohesively it all made sense especially with the innocence of the kids seeing black children themselves interacting our main children didn't see them with hate in their heart they just saw them as another child racism is a learned thing so you're gonna learn it from your peers you're gonna learn it from your family unfortunately and these kids were not tainted because their father atticus once again told them that everyone is created equal and i absolutely love that so wouldn't change anything really in the story department and of course as i had said you know sometimes it's not sunshines and rainbows at least for tom they did get that karma handed back to them on a silver platter and that devil of a man met his fate at the end of a blade I would rather Tom have lived, but you know what? It made it more realistic to that time period, and it really sucked me in a little more that Tom met his unfortunate fate. I just really gotta say, guys, I'm gonna start watching a lot more classic movies, a lot more older black and white pictures, because I just have so much solid energy. Like, once I come out of these movies, I just appreciate cinema so much more. So enough talking. 1962's To Kill a Mockingbird is getting a solid five out of five. All right, Flix Talkers, what did you rate To Kill a Mockingbird? Let me know down in the comments below out of five. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you guys did appreciate my reaction and thoughts by liking the video and consider subscribing today as we do more reactions, live streams, movie news, and so much more here on the channel. Till next time, Flix Talkers, I'm gone. Peace.